y'all know recently I went to fucking Denver and it was fucking great. Um, but it was my first time being at a dispensary, number one. Number two was, it was my first time ever being to a state where we was legal and recreationally legal. So I came with details and um, information about that. So um, first, let's get into the beginning. So I went to Denver, Colorado. The weed is legal there, recreationally legal. So um, a lot of states are recreationally legal. Um, and they're also like medicinally legal and or and or so there are 33 states that are medicinally legal um, medicinally legal cannabis means that basically um, it's about what you do with it so you're not really using strands that have high potency in THC um, they really care more about CBD but it's still some THC in there but uh, medis and, that's, and that's for medicinally labeled. So 33 states plus DC have, out of our 50 states, um, have medicinally legal marijuana. So that just means you have to prove you have some type of problem that marijuana will be able to, or cannabis, will be able to help you solve. Um, which, boo, because why do I have to have problems to have great drugs? So... There are 11 states, including Colorado and D.C., that have um, recreationally legal marijuana. Um, rec rec recreationally uh, legal means that anybody can waltz up in the dispensary and get what the fuck you want if you got the bread. Um, but each state, because uh, states' rights versus federal rights, each state has their own stipulations on how um, you can go about recreationally purchasing weed. So this video is about for Denver because that's where I went. So those are the rules I'm going to tell you about. Um, so in Denver, um, anybody over the age of 21 who has a license, no matter where it is from, um, as long as your license or any official document, identification document, says that you're over the age of, the age of 21, then you can go to the dispensary and get high. Um, when you go to the dispensary, um, a lot of the dispensaries I went to there had uh, registries or some type of check-in process. And that way they took your information, your phone number, probably they either, they usually scan or swipe your license. Um, so they are keeping track of that. Um, and I didn't mean that in a creepy way, you guys. And uh, yeah, so that's the big the beginning um they prefer that you pay cash um just because it's easier um from what i've read online a lot of prop a lot of dispensaries have problems getting banks to house or bank their money um because it's drug money so whether white or black no matter who owns the dispensary they have a problem getting their money into the bank especially if they list their business as a dispensary so they prefer you pay cash, um, but you can pay card and they use some type of ATM cash ATM system where they like, uh, not all of them do this. Some just take card and they, it's just an extra fee. Um, and then other one, I went to this one place called Green Solutions. Uh, when I went to Good Chemistry, they just uh, had a card. It was a fee. There you go. Um, Green Solutions had a ATM, like a uh, cash ATM. So they swipe your card, they round up five on your card. Then when they round up five on your card, that includes the processing fees and it also includes the uh, processing fees tax. And uh, then you get change backs for whether, whatever the difference was when you rounded up $5. Um, weird, but it was cool, it wasn't that bad. Um, Oh, you have to, uh, so they have to put your items in very discreet baggies. So, the very discreet baggie looks like this one. So, um, they like scan it. And then after they scan the bag, they put all your things in here and it closes up, drawstring style. And um, it's, so it's like sealed. 
So um, another place I went to, it was like a paper bag and they just like stapled it. But the law in Colorado is that you have to get your products in an enclosed, discreet looking bag. So um, these are cute though and reusable. So I do like. Um, the limit at purchasing anything in the dispensary is an ounce a day. When you go into the dispensary, they have everything that you can imagine from edibles, chocolates, gummies, juices, sodas, to flour, shake, nugs, wide range of selections and uh, knowledge about the product. So you know if you're getting indica or sativa if it's low range like 14 to 16 percent or if it's high range like 25 and higher because it gets higher you know um oh so in the dispensary they also have um i said the nugs the eddies they also have uh beauty products balms and ointments and creams with thc in them so you get high but your body gets high when I go back, I will be getting some. Um, they also have just literally everything you can think of. And still your regular smoke shop things, bongs, bowls, bike, pipes, bikes. Ah, it's a combo. Um, and pipes. Uh, one hitters, papers, rellos, grinders, the smorgasbord, okay? Um, the all uh, um they do because it's recreationally legal there. They do have rules and stipulations on where you can smoke. So there's no public smoking. You need to smoke where you reside, um, even where your money reside. No, you can smoke where you reside. Um, a lot of the hotels, there are no smoking. Like 75% of the hotels, there are no smoking hotels. Um, but I will say that a lot of places smell like weed in Colorado. Um, some of the other states that uh, have legalized marijuana is uh, Washington, the state, also DC, but Washington, the state, Oregon, Nevada, Cali, we know them, Massachusetts, Maine, Vermont, which I was not hip to, um, and Alaska. Weed is legal in Alaska. Like, I know everyone in Alaska ain't no, no not no Eskimo, but is getting high in the snow. It, some about high just make it seem like a vibe. So even in the snow, in an igloo, shit, I might could fuck with it. A night or two, a night or two, not alone. But the limitations of the law that uh, has recreationally legalized and decriminalized marijuana in Colorado specifically is limited because there is no edible restaurants. Somehow the law has made, uh, I don't know the exact vernacular of the law, but it has made to where edible restaurants are not a thing, depressingly. But I would love that. But gray areas and loopholes private chefs so there are a lot of private chefs um and we talked about one on my podcast the station so tune into our episode of arte de cannabis on episode five to learn about um chef miguel and chef miguel has private dinner parties um where all the food is infused with thc and you is getting high baby on his supply for a nice beautiful pretty coin okay um and there other there are other chefs like chef miguel who do that who help and assist uh and host and cater private events with edible food with the eddies 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 um i'm a big edible fan but i really like to like whole being so high you kind of forget you got edible you like why am i so high because you didn't smoke it's wonderful so I definitely recommend if you are a weed connoisseur of any sorts that you take a trip to a place where weed is legal and enjoy yourself enjoy it because it's a fucking vibe okay get high kick your feet up do all the shit you do at home 
after you have to go get weed from the weed man who takes a fucking long ass time and you can just pull up in the dispensary some of them are open fucking almost 20 hours a fucking day and there was some 24 hour ones and you just can get whatever you want whatever you want so I had a great time, to say the least. There will be a vlog coming out about my trip to Denver doing Queen-tober for my birthday. We'll celebrate all my highlights from this year because Denver was a fucking vibe. So, remember to keep liking, subscribing, and commenting. Remember to comment so you could talk to me. Um, click the link, always listed down below in the description if you want to find me on any of my social medias. Um, or keep up with me and see what the fuck I got going on on my website. Bye.